Hello there and welcome to this which is the fourth episode now of um, Cancer Face, our uh, comprehensive critique of cancer care in the UK. Um, I'll start perhaps this week again with our, with our correspondence. Um, again we've been overwhelmed by the, the avalanche of emails and uh, uh, letters. It, it's, not, it's pretty rare isn't it that we get four, four emails in the same week. Um, majority is still about Nubsy, um, but there was uh, one particularly pertinent one uh, uh, to myself, which says, um, "Dear Ian, this story this is from uh, Mrs. Uh, or Mr. Sorry, Mr. Mr. Colin Murty uh, of Leith, uh, which is in Scotland, I believe." And he says, uh, "Dear Ian, what a miserable, depressing little vlog yours is. Who wants to watch this kind of nonsense? It only makes me feel worse." Why can't you look on the bright side and count your lucky stars, he says. <clears throat> Which is um, interesting because that kind of chimes with some conversations that uh, me and Nubsy have been having, haven't we, over the, over the past week or so, um, about trying to make this vlog a little bit more, more positive, really, um, and, 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 and to kind of look a little more on the bright side, as Mr Murty suggests. And... Uh, the way we'll do that, uh, because what, what we're trying to do is, what are we trying to do? We're trying to monetize, that's right. We're trying, we're trying to monetize this vlog. Um, and um, the way you monetize the vlog is, is by getting lots of people watching it. And, um, and, then, they, um, and, then, and then you become, uh, what, what do you do? You catch influenza. Or you become an influencer. Sorry, you become an influencer, that's right. So, what the young people do these days, and Nubs is two years old, so he understands these things a lot better than any twenty-year-old would. Um, and what you, what we intend to do is is monetize it by becoming a, a, an influencer. And if we do that, then apparently companies or advertisers will come and and they want to uh, they want to pay us money, won't they? Uh, and how is it? How, what, what is it we have to do to get them to pay money? product placement that's right that's right we get them we get such a lot of you watching and uh, you're so uplifted by the experience that any kind of thing that we have in view uh, that's a product um then uh, th then you would wish out and buy it so i might have a kind of brown beans or something uh, behind me here on the shelf and um you'll watch the video and, and, and become so uplifted that subliminally it'll mean that that what you want to do is nip out and, and, and buy a can of Brown's bins because that, that apparently is the way that, that capitalism works these days. Um, so we're very much in chime really with, with, with Mr Murty's aims um, and we want to stress the positives and the upside and, and, and certainly I think one of the upsides of, of the last week um, is that you know, the more discerning amongst you and I think most of you are quite discerning, apart from uh, Mrs. Johnson of Trowbridge, Trowbridge, um, that uh, you've noticed that I've lost quite a bit of weight. In fact, I've lost seven pounds uh, over the last seven days uh, because, as you know, from last week I went in and had a, had a biopsy. So it certainly can form, having cancer can certainly form a, a critical part of your, your weight loss plan. Um, and uh, any kind of calorie counting is not required. There's no real effort required. You just lose weight. Quite a lot of the weight, of that half a stone that I've lost in the last seven days, quite a lot of that will be my teeth. Um, because they took out uh, 10 molars, I think it was, wasn't it? No, it was 10 molars they took out. Um, and um, so that will account for some of the the half stone that, that, that I lost. Um, but certainly it does help with any dieting and it is effort free. Um, so what happened was, as I say, we, we, we had the biopsy. Before the biopsy, actually, you go, on the Monday we went for, or I went for, for what they call a pre-assessment, uh, which is where you, uh, you go along and really you're assessed to see, and if you pass the assessment, then you can have your surgery. They're assessing you to see if you're fit for surgery, isn't it? That's right. And um, uh, so you go along, and uh, there's a very nice nurse there who uh, 
who uh, took blood and did my observations, blood pressure, and weight, etc. Had to answer all sorts of questions. Um, and uh, this nurse actually decided that she thought uh, it would be a good idea if I also had an ECG. Um, so she sent me along to the kind of cardio uh, measurement department and um, I, I thought, oh, but as I entered the room, there were about 30 people sat there. I thought, oh dear, and this is going to take energy sat here, um, waiting for the uh, my place in the queue. And um, lo and behold, I, I'd barely opened my book uh, as I sat down to read and, and my name was called uh, and I had to go and get my ECG and go and walk past these 30 or 40 people who were staring at me with envy and hatred. Um, and uh, so I did that, I, I, I had the ECG. So there's a second positive, you see, if you've got cancer, you do turn into a bit of a, a queue jumper uh, and you don't have to wait around like the rest of the hoi polloi do with their, uh, their heart failure and their COPD. There's something about cancer, I think, which which uh, does mean that it's 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 kind of the royalty of uh, these kind of life-threatening illnesses, uh, which is presumably why it can attract such masses of uh, funds for research through through charities, uh, etc. So uh, that was on the Monday, and then on the Wednesday I went in for the operation. Um, I, I had to go in for twelve o'clock. Um, they say don't eat anything for five and a half, eat or drink anything for five and a half hours beforehand um, and I couldn't be bothered to get about half past six in the morning so I went in there uh, pretty hungry and first of all you go to this room um, where you're kind of booking um, and I went in and booked in uh, and about five or six fellas all my age it was the, the male waiting room um, and then after about five minutes after I'd sat down, this 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 young lad comes in, uh, proper proper borough lad, um, in his uh, shorts and uh, trendy t-shirt etc., um, and came blustering in and said, uh, "Oh, was he in the right place?" And um, I won't try and do the accent because I can't really do it, but it's uh, I'm in the right place. He said, and, and the woman said, "Yes, sir. what what's wrong with you?" He said, "Oh, I got knifed. I got knifed." Uh, I was fighting and I got knifed uh, and I had a big wound uh, on his arm um, and uh, I thought, oh, this is going to lively up our, uh, our afternoon a bit. Uh, and he was complaining then because she asked him when, he, when he'd last had something to eat, which was about an hour and a half previously. She said, well, we can't do anything um, until at least half past four then because you, you're not going to eat. And he was, oh, da -da 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 -da. Um, and uh, a bit of an unhappy fella um, but um, I actually left him in there because I was, I was again the first to get called through actually to go through the next room um, where and I thought oh this is good uh, maybe I'm going to get my operation done fairly quickly and uh, I'll be able to have something to eat um, but I wasn't uh, it took uh, a bit longer and what, what they did was they they got me to undress and uh, put me in a, this kind of hospital theatre gown thing uh, and sat me in an armchair where I ended up waiting for about another three and a half hours, uh, all without food. And I thought, well, this this is a bit of a uh, problem with communication here, isn't it? Because if I'd known that I wasn't going to be on the list until 3.30, then I could have had my breakfast, uh, which would have made that day a little less of a pain. Um, but I had to sit there and, and, and wait. And I must have dozed off because after a while uh, I could tell it was somebody alongside me. They had a curtain half drawn across. Um, and uh, this fellow was uh, uh, just talking to his nurse and was, yes, nurse, no nurse, very polite, very quite, kind of quite meek. Uh, and when they drew back the curtain, I saw it was the same lad who had been there earlier on and he'd been transformed from this kind of... Uh, feisty jack the lad to being an obedient little um, uh, <coughs> fellow who was going to do anything that he was told and uh, I thought there's something about this the whole process there's something about the way that uh, you're, you're, you're kind of brought in you're taken all your clothes are taken off you know I think that's quite a crucial thing uh, <coughs> and then you're made to just sit 
uh, and wait for ages and ages, all of which kind of uh, makes you feel like you're kind of shrinking uh, as a human being. Um, and um, that you will therefore for do as you're told. Um, so that was it, and I went in and uh, was wheeling on the trolley and uh, was, was knocked out. Um, when I came round, the uh, the consultant, you're a bit foolish usually after uh, uh, anaesthetic, and um, but the consultant was just coming round uh, and uh, he had his blue kind of cap on and his gown, etc. And uh, I couldn't recognise him at all at first, and I kind of laughed. When I said, oh, I said, oh, I didn't recognise you with your hat on. Um, but uh, he must have thought um, I was a bit foolish, although he's probably used to that, I suppose, post-operative nonsense. And he said uh, he hoped that they got enough of a, a sample uh, to be able to um, do the staging and grading. And he did warn me that if not, they might have to go back in and... Um, it would be altogether a riskier procedure, which wasn't exactly what I wanted to hear. Um, but that was that, and then I was over onto the ward. Uh, I had my own single room at first, but then they booted me out, but it put me in a bay. But it was the quietest bay I've ever been in. Um, total contrast to the last time I was in a bay, which was for the bladder uh, operation, when uh, basically the the, uh, the other blokes in there were driving me mad with their uh, chat. Um, and none of them seemed particularly ill to me. Whereas the good thing about this one was that nearly everybody uh, I, I worked out um, from their conversations on their phones, etc., and nearly everybody was having some difficulty speaking um, because of the operation they'd had. Um, but um, that was good, and it was a nice little ward, uh, and the nurses were, 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 were great um, and were very nice. And that's, that's a third plus, actually, the third big plus. Uh, you can be a queue jumper, uh, you can lose weight, but it's also uh, how nice uh, people do tend to be to you, uh, towards you when you have you have cancer. Um, and uh, that, for Mrs Murty's benefit, would be my third big positive. People do tend to be uh, very accommodating uh, and you can get away with all sorts. And even Nubsy said to me, didn't he? Nubsy said to me the other day, he said, I couldn't give a damn, he said, whether you live or die. Um, which is which is so much nicer than the things that he, he normally says to me. Uh, particularly, of course, as he's got six bonios uh, riding on the outcome. He wins six bonios if I die before him. So for him to say that he didn't give a damn whether I live or die was really, really touched me, really. So, that's that, I think, uh, for this week. During the next week, um, uh, we're kind of there's a possibility we might be called in on Thursday to get these results, but more likely that will be uh, a week on this Thursday um, that we'll go and meet them again and they'll tell us about the grading and staging <coughs> and uh, the six weeks of chemo uh, or radiotherapy that I've got to look forward to. I I'm going for my final BCG tomorrow. Um, I'm aware I've not really described much my treatment for bladder cancer, so I'll... Uh, uh, we might spend a bit of time on that in the next episode, um, as well as um, coming out with some uh, meaningless banalities about being more positive about things. Um, so look forward to that. <coughs> look forward to seeing you all next week. Bye-bye.